And I'm like, but that's how everybody thinks, right? And he was like, you are dead wrong. He's like, I see enough 1003s, loan applications. And he's like, that is not how people live. That's a recipe for no hope, no peace in your life. Rant. I have a friend who's a really smart guy, a real estate investor, and he recently sold this big deal, a couple hundred thousand dollars he made. He had this picture of him at a car dealership, and I think it was a Ferrari dealership or something, I don't remember exactly, and there was like a red car and there was like a gray car, and he was like pointing at both of them, he's like kind of like, hey, hey, Facebook, like which one should I pick, right? So I just made a couple hundred thousand dollars, and like which car am I gonna buy? And ultimately, he was kind of joking, he ended up buying one of those things, but I think that's how most people think. I made $200,000, of course I can go buy a $200,000 car. I talked to a loan officer recently about this. He's like, I see enough 1003s, loan applications. And he's like, that is not how people live in America. That's not how people live probably in the world, but in America, if they make this money, they will, that means they can get this much credit and they'll live up all the way to that. That is a recipe for bankruptcy, that is a recipe for disaster, that is a recipe for no hope, no peace in your life. I'm hungry, I'm ready to eat. Bold day burritos, that's a choice. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm nuts. We do a budget and we have we give ourselves personal money every month we can spend. Mm -hmm. And I keep track of everything I spend personally. Check it out. Chipotle, Chipotle, haircut, Chipotle, Subway, haircut. Yeah. Chipotle, Chipotle, haircut, Chipotle, Chipotle, Chipotle. November, Chipotle, 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 Chipotle. <laughs> wow. I eat a lot of Chipotle. <laughs> My personal budget can't afford it, but I don't care. Who's the walk? <laughs> the way that I think somebody can afford something and the way that people actually feel like they can afford something is vastly different. Here's the thing. The people that are financially successful became financially successful in large part because they were able to sacrifice. You guys remember that video from a couple weeks ago, like the, the corn seeds? The people that got it first that decided to sacrifice, the compounding nature of that mean, meant at the very end, massive amounts of candy corn. You have Seven, a nice chicken uh, candy 40. corn. People are like, okay, yeah, I get that. And that's how I'm gonna become wealthy. I'm gonna like push things forward. I'm gonna sacrifice. I'm gonna use the power of compound interest. When's this period of sacrifice over? You know, I get it. Like you've sacrificed, you've planted your seed corn and that seed corn has grown and you've taken those seeds and you've planted more seed corn. And you've got this pile of corn. When can you in increase your lifestyle? There's some successful real estate investors that are older people. And I've asked them this question. He said, 70% of all the money you make, go ahead and spend it. 10% give it away to something that's going to make you feel good, tithing. 10% reinvest it. 10% invest in your education. That was his model. But knowing a little bit about him, I don't believe that he spends 70% of what he makes. I don't think so. But that was the answer he kind of gave to me and maybe to the masses. So here's the way I kind of see it. There's different buckets. The water flows from these different buckets. Your top bucket right here is you working for money. Most people work for money and they get that money that flows out of their work, their dollars per hour, and they spend that money. You can take it and you can consume the whole thing. Everybody gets that paycheck, but then you decide what you want to do with that paycheck. The next level of that is you work for the money, you make some money, so now you can invest it in marketing and personnel, so now you've got a business. Now that business now is spilling over and making you some money. Okay, so now is it okay for this business that's technically like you're a little bit passive in that because it's not your dollars per hour, but your business is spitting off money. Is it okay now to take that money from that flow overflow of that bucket and consume it in your lifestyle? Some people say that's okay. That's why you built this business, right? So you have financial freedom. You're free from your time. You don't have to be there and still make you money. Make your choices. For me, is it okay to spend 70% of that? No, the next level for me is that bucket, your business bucket, your somewhat passive bucket, if it's making money, that flows out of that and it's coming into this next bucket. And that next bucket is investments. You take the money from your active business and it flows into this side. In this bucket right here, say you bought a rental property, okay? You're still only spending 70% of the returns from that passive bucket, right? Why? Because you've got 10% that's still going back into that bucket so that, that bucket continues to grow. I track all of my personal expenses. Every single thing I, I spend personally, a lot of my money, and my I was just looking at my personal expenses for a year because they're itemized out. Uh, I got a lot of Chipotle in there. And now down the line down here, the water that flows out of this bucket that money, now you're getting to a place where, now that's an adequate question. When can I spend the money that that bucket produces, right? Because that's a little more perpetual bucket. I would highly recommend you find which bucket you're okay living with and find which percentage you're living, willing to live in that bucket. Just make sure that percentage is less than 100% or else you're never gonna have any water to flow down to the next bucket. So I wanna encourage you guys, determine what level of sacrifice, what percent of your income you're willing to live on to push into that next bucket so that you eventually you can have that true financial freedom and do what it is you want and actually be able to afford something.
contest, contest, contest. So those of you who want to participate, guess how much money I've spent on Chipotle so far this year, personally, just my money, not family, whatever, just personal trips to Chipotle. And the person that gets closest to that exact dollar amount, and I guess we can divulge it next week, will win any of our products from Gumroad, digital products, educational stuff. Gumroad, if you go to iloverosestories.com and you see uh, the products page, the winner will get any of them, any of them. So that's up to like four or $500 value. Put it in the comments, uh, how much you think I've spent? Well, wait, you gotta subscribe and like it before I give it to you. Just kidding, just add up the Chipotle, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> but subscribe and like if you want to. How much do you think I've spent? <sighs> the shame, <laughs> the shame. And if you know somebody at Chipotle that I can get the wood card from, give me the wood card. I feel like Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven.